Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. Today, my buddy Perry is here with me from Swetka's Tennis Shop. He and I are probably about the same age, and we've been in the tennis business for about the same amount of long, long time. <laughs> so we're going to do a little shop talk today, and, and especially talk about what technologies has changed and has made tennis greater and worser in the last, uh, what, 30 some years? Let's yeah. see. Stay tuned. All right, so this segment of our coffee talk is uh, sponsored by Dave. Uh, Dave writes, I came across your channel a couple years ago and have been enjoying your vids. I've been playing tennis since elementary school and am surprised that the endless things to still find out. Tennis is really a life journey. Cheers. Oh, thank you, Dave. And I'm glad you're one of those people that, um, you know, just take tennis for what it is. It's a game, guys. It's a game. Have fun. You know, you're not going to learn it in a minute. And you may not even, well, I know you won't perfect it in a lifetime. So <laughs> just enjoy it. Enjoy the time. Enjoy the people. Um, enjoy the game. If you want to sponsor a coffee club segment, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. If you want to just support the channel, super thanks is the way. Link is below. Cheers to you guys and thank you so, so much. All right, so guys, I want to introduce Perry here. Um, when I was at the Swetka's tennis shop, you know, we missed each other and he reached out because he had something that I needed and I had something that he needed. So, so we connected and they were rackets. So we connected and we we're like, let's, let's sit down. Let's talk. Let's, let's talk to you guys. Um, the subject that I wanted to talk about with you is because we've been in the business for so long, like literally 1990, 91, 92 is when we got in. Mm -hmm. And I think we were just getting out of the wood, metal, thin beam rackets. Yeah. Um, like we're leaving kind of pro staffish in the 85s and the graphite 110s, not behind, but, you know, looking in the rearview mirror of it. Yeah. And then we're moving into kind of wide body ish, profile ish, hammer ish kind of a time frame. Yeah. But in our 30 years, what have you seen that has literally changed the game for the better? Hmm. Well, um, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, shout out to John and Ken at Sweat Kids. I wouldn't <laughs> be here without you guys. So thank you very much. Um, you know, for me, more so, I think, than the, the racket changes, I think you'd probably agree, is the introduction of polyester string. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the big game changer, you know, in terms of how the game has changed, I think. Uh, the modern game today versus what it was back in our mm -hmm. day. Totally. Totally changed. Uh, what used to be a more linear shot is now all about racket head speed and shape <laughs> to get those revolutions on the ball. Yeah. And uh, once guys like Guga Quartin and the Spanish Armada started coming out with Big Banger and ALU Power, it's mm -hmm. like these guys can just be offensive from the return on. Um, I think that's really what st stands out for me. The first iterations weren't that great. I mean, it was literally, I mean, I dare to say weed whacker, fish line <laughs> kind of thing. I mean, it was, I was like, wow. I, to, when I first, encountered it i was at a tournament i was stringing at the stanford no the san jose the sap open yeah. and i'm like what is this stuff it's like a pain to string yeah. you know does this guy really the first thing in my mind was does does this guy really break strings this fast you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I i could imagine it's probably like a really hard fishing wire exactly um but whoever decided that wow 
I can hit the snot out of the ball. I won't have to worry about it hitting the back fence. Mm -hmm. I can put a ton of spin on it, so I've got margin now. Great for, you know, those European and Latin American players that thrive on, you know, these prolonged rallies, I think. So that was the key benefit. Right. So you're a player yourself. What was your yeah. first encounter with Polly then? Wow. Um, I would have to say, yeah, probably ALU Power. Uh, okay. I was not on the, I didn't try the Big Banger first because uh, I, I, I guess, started that late in the process. Um, we had an employee that uh, swore by Kirschbaum, oh, yeah. uh, Spiky, and all this Spiky other. Spiky Shark, yeah. Yes, exactly. Um, and, you know, I, I could see the benefits right away. It's like, wow, you can really pound the ball with this thing and not feel like I'm losing a ton of control. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to hit a, a bit more flatter shot, although my game has changed over the years. I think ours always, yeah. we all do. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it would it definitely helped in terms of maintaining that sense of control. Mm -hmm. um, not great on the arm mm -hmm. uh, initially. I knock on something that I never had any elbow or wrist issues, but I could see the potential uh, for problems. And you'd hear it from customers over the years or the decades that would try it. Now, what's your string setup? up? Uh, it depends on the racket. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, so currently, <laughs> well, let's see. I would say probably I use a lot of Polytour Rev. Okay. Uh, Polytour Pro. Got um, it. So I've been playing around with uh, strings like Toro Line. Yep. Yep. Restring. I haven't dipped into the uh, Grapple Snake uh, okay. segment okay. yet. No. Yeah. I, like, I think those yeah. are a bit softer, a little more playable mm -hmm. compared mm -hmm. to like I don't know, like Lynx Tour or uh, 4G, which are very yeah. firm. Right. 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 Yeah. You like a firmer. I like a firmer string. I actually like it as like hard as possible. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, like I just don't like the mushy feel, and I don't like mm -hmm. the mushy sound. You know, I, I want to hear a ping, uh, and I like the constant ringing. <laughs> I'm, more, I'm more of a thud. I like to hear a, a thud, and just feels rock solid when I hit it. Um, okay, yeah, so you're a dampener they, guy. Yeah, I'm a dampener guy okay. for sure. Um, but as far as the rackets, yeah, definitely the advent of the profile. Uh, that yeah. was a huge game changer. Mm -hmm. um, Dunlop uh, Super Revelation. Uh, I don't know if you remember that. Is that the one with the 15 mains? Uh, That's the DB. Had, that was yeah, the, the, the DB. Yeah, I know Super Revelation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was a, actually a huge seller for the shop uh, because of that uh, dampening system. I mm -hmm. won't. Exactly. <laughs> ISIS? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, not, not politically uh, as right. But, um, ISIS yeah, the that queen. did really well. Yeah, <laughs> so, and that's another big change, I think, in the racket technology was the introduction of dampening elements in yeah. the handles, uh, like that Dunlop, and then subsequently Vocal, you know, with their dampening system, right. and then the big grommet technology. So you can see the progression that they're trying to make these stiff, powerful rackets a little more comfortable. Right. Yeah. That's a great point because the profiles that first came out were hollow as hell and everybody was getting tennis elbow with it and they, they even gave you a little W shock damper with the racket mm -hmm. um, so that you hopefully don't complain too much into the uh, the hammers where I think the first iteration was still hollow. Into the second iterations, they foamed them, I think. So they 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 knew that it was causing something, and then they they put the foam in the handle just to try to take the vibration out. Yeah. And then then on, I think all the stiff rackets got foamed up or something. You know, was in there. I mean, it wasn't as as I don't want to say professional. It wasn't as good as like the vocal ones or the Dunlop right. ones, but right. I think it was something. Yeah, you know? yeah, you know that foam. I mean, well, even to this day with the RFO one, right? Know, it's a foam filled, but it's a straight up graphite Kevlar setup and no tech. <laughs> so yep. yeah, going back to feel. Well, that's I guess the other thing with all these dampening systems and all these uh, advances. You know, a lot of people found the rackets feeling almost too muted um, to the point where... <laughs> this guy. <laughs> yeah, to the point where I don't feel anything. I don't know where my contact point is in, in relation to where the ball is traveling. Right. Yeah, so, but again, I, I tend to like a more muted feel, so, it, yeah. Now, now we're so you're talking about uh, profile and wide body. Mm -hmm. The next thing that I felt came up was... Babylon. 
<laughs> yeah, shout out to Prokenix for that mold. If it wasn't for that mold, Babolat would still be kind of languishing, I think. But uh, yeah, with the introduction of that pure drive, that was a huge game changer. Mm -hmm. um, and the fact that you had that first wave of that Spanish Armada with yeah. guys like Carlos Moya, Alex Correcha, then you had Roddick, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the other side of the pond. So Kim Kleister's, so you had this huge visibility. It's like, what is this blue racket? Exactly. Um, and why are they, they're crushing the ball with this thing. And uh, yeah, and that totally changed, I think, the landscape in terms of every other, you know, manufacturer has to have a comparable equivalent now of that racket. Exactly. It, it, it basically became the blueprint. And, and I felt like before, like a, the pure drive, every racket that a pro would use was thin beam. Mm -hmm. 95 or smaller sure and you had to play with that when Roddick came with the blue racket um, right. it's, it's like what is going like, on yeah wow he's why is he playing with that racket and yeah. then you got the college kids I remember going to Cal watching a Cal Stanford match and I'm like well the guy's playing with a blue racket yeah yeah <laughs> that's it's, just like what you said yeah um yeah especially down in Florida and stuff like that you see all these kids at these at these camps it's like suddenly they're getting these blue rackets and, mm -hmm. and it just kind of mushroomed from there right so i think they they yeah they struck it struck it rich when they came out with that oh they struck and then nadal, nadal was like with the, the, arrow, the game was, changing for them yeah, yeah and that took it to the next level exactly. i think for sure. but uh you know fortunately they're still making some thin beam rackets um but the game is changing so much uh that it's starting to become almost obsolete to to a point um so hopefully they don't do away with them completely I, but, yeah uh, no 95 is almost extinct i know mm -hmm. dunlop does a couple of 95s um i can't think of too many others oh uh, yonex does that the yeah. core 95 that's right um but they just recent had recently released their you know prestige classic 2.0 or oh, yes. the 93 head. Yes, yes, yes. Um, no one was buying that, unfortunately, for yeah, a while. Yeah, uh, just a few. Yeah, yeah, I mean, because it was just too demanding yeah. uh, by today's standards. But great, great feeling stick, but uh, not for everyone. Yeah, so that's the, the, the technology of the equipment has definitely changed the game. Um, it's made it easier for everybody. Uh, it's also almost done away with net play. Big so time. that's the negative. <laughs> yes, because now, you know, uh, changes in training and just approach to the game. So if you're a returner, you're thinking offensively now versus I just want to get the ball back. Um, now, you know, they're teaching him to go after the returns like a Djokovic, right. like, like most of the current players. Um, so imagine having to try to dig a volley out over and over and over again to a guy that's using his target practice mm -hmm. and makes for a long afternoon. Um, yeah, uh, I think you saw that in the uh, year-end Masters when uh, the year-end championships when Guga beat Agassi and Sampras yeah. on a on indoor <laughs> carpet. It's like who is this guy? You know, and he's just taking big cuts at every ball. Yeah, no, the equipment definitely has changed the game. Um, yes. So after Babolat. Was there anything else? Um, I, I, I mean, there is. Uh, I would say there was, you know, like those niche racket brands, you know, like yeah. Rosignol with right. Belander, Noah's Lacoste Sportif. Right. Um, I mean, but I mean, once that Pure Drive came out, it's like that's wow. that's probably the the most significant change in equipment in the last twenty five years. That helped them it, leap over Wilson. Yes. Yes. Because now they're the big two. I mean, even though you can argue that head should be right up there, too, if you look at the current top ten on the ATP. Right, right. Sinner, Djokovic, uh, Zverev, Rublev, you know, they're, yeah, all using head. they're all using head. Now, what about Clash? What about Clash? Well, that, yeah, I would say that's a, a big introduction to that segment of uh, players that would find that these power rackets were, wow, yeah, they're great in terms of responsiveness, but man, it's really taking a toll on my body. Mm -hmm. So by coming up with that, you know, much softer shaft, um, just allowing the racket to absorb that impact mm -hmm. more, mm -hmm. uh, just made for a more comfortable experience. So it actually helped those players um, 
So maybe somebody in our age group or older uh, really benefits. Are you a fan of it? Myself personally, you know, I like the version to uh, 98. I think okay. by adding the additional cross to a 1620 that helped temper the racket for right. what it is. So it was kind of in line with, like, say, an E-Zone right. to some extent. Um, so it made it more controllable. And I think they were trying to, you know, target that racket and the Clash Pro for that player, right. you know, that still hits a good ball, but wants something a little more comfortable. Right. Yeah. But, and it, like... It was a number one racket for about a year and a half, <clears throat> and then version two came out. Yep. Um, unfortunately, the color. Uh, yeah, I thought I kind of liked the all red. Really? Personally, I'm not a red person. Ah. I've actually had women who say I'm not buying this racket because it's red. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, interesting. Uh, we've, well, at least from our experience, we found that it's almost the opposite. It's like, oh, I really like this red. A really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, kind of yeah. like an old lady red. <laughs> Well, the new upcoming one should... Yeah, you'll love the new one coming up. Um, but I feel like <clears throat> I feel like Clash is not wasn't as big as Pure Drive. Uh, no. Yeah, for sure. Um, but I'm sure there there will be something coming though. <laughs> right, and I think the Clash maybe you know uh, has a bigger impact for that. You know, club level or uh, definitely player versus say it on the ATP. I mean, I can't imagine anybody hitting with that uh, mm. at that level. It's just yeah, it would just be too soft. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that were the game changing moments in our opinion. I mean, we've both been literally stringing rackets for thirty years, and we've seen everything in shops, people, technology. Um, companies coming up with things that worked. Um, some worked great. Some left pretty quickly. So. Yeah, I can think of that Dunlop uh, handle system. Where oh, it was a great idea. John says the same thing. Oh, this would have been great. It's just it, it, if you have everybody come apart. back. Yes, yeah. is it supposed to fall apart like this? Yeah, they, they tried. Yeah. Yeah, no. but it was a good idea. Yeah, the Dunlop, uh, I even forgot what the thing oh. was called. Oh, the iDapt. Man, it wasn't everything was I. You know, you put a chip in a soccer ball, <laughs> basketball, you know, all that stuff. It was in that time. Um, yeah, head intelligence. Yeah. Uh, man, it was, oh my gosh, that was such a great idea. One of many. <laughs> See, you know, we all try. What do I tell you guys? You know, if you don't string it or sell it or teach it, you're probably not making money in tennis. Am I right? Unless you're on the tour. You better be top 20. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I want to thank my man Perry here for hanging out with me and doing this segment of Coffee Chat. Um, Thanks for having me here. Yeah. just wanted to say thank you again to John and Ken over at Sweatkiz for the decades of, uh, yeah, keeping tennis alive in the Bay Area. And uh, shout out to Mike Lotta, Dave Dwelly. Thanks for the lid. <laughs> yeah, perfect. Um, and Josh Olson. So if you want to see uh, Perry, he's over at Swetka's Tennis Shop, Mountain View. Um, he's there limited hours, but you'll see the gang. Uh, when are you there? Uh, usually Sundays, uh, Tuesdays, and Thursdays. They Got kind it. Of office hours. Yeah. Cool, cool. So yeah, check them out over there. Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.